Hi, my name is Methat Al Masri. Today I'm going to talk to you about Dockerizing a PHP and MySQL web app. You can find resources at these sites. So this is the architecture of what we're going to be doing today. We're going to be using a tool called Docker Compose. And Docker Compose is essentially going to create a local area network in Docker that contains two separate containers. On the right side, there will be a MySQL version 8.0 container. And on the left side, you can see a container that contains the PHP framework, the Apache web server, and our PHP web app. The website container will be exposed to the host machine on port 8080. And both containers will communicate through port 3306, the default port number that MySQL listens on. The only prerequisite you need before we can proceed is for you to install Docker Desktop. Now, Docker Desktop is available for all the operating systems, especially Windows and Mac. So let's get started. The first thing I will do is create a subdirectory for my application and I'll call it PHP MyQL app and I'll go into that directory. Now inside of that directory I'm going to create another directory called src for my source code. So that would be mkdir src. Now I will go into that directory and create a new file for my PHP application that's going to be talking to MySQL. So for that purpose, I will open up Notepad and give it the name index.php. This will open up for me a Notepad file. Now inside index.php, I will put in this code. If you look at this code, the top part is nothing but HTML and here I will use Bootstrap to make my site look pretty. The main part of the code is this PHP code here. Now, in order to talk to MySQL, I will need these parameters that pretty much make up my connection string. The first thing is the host. I'm going to read this from the environment variable. If that environment environment variable exists, then I'm going to get my host variable from this environment variable. The same is true of the port, which we know is 3306 by default. So if it exists, I will read it from the environment variable. Otherwise, I'll default it to 3306. As far as the user is concerned, again, it will be read from the environment variable if it exists. Otherwise, it will default to root. And the same applies to the password and the database now. Now, the database name in this particular example is not relevant because this code here, all it does is connect to the database server and read the databases that exist in the database server. Therefore, there is some logic here to determine whether the database has a specific name. If we're not interested in any specific database, then we're just gonna connect using the host, the port number, the username, and the password. Otherwise, if we want to connect to a specific database, the last argument here is the database name. All these commands return a connection object. Now, using the connection object, if there is an error, we will display an error message and die. Otherwise, we will execute a query against the database using the connection object. Now, the query to MySQL to determine what databases exist in the MySQL server is simply show databases. If there's an error when we execute this query, we will display an error message. Otherwise, we'll echo a title databases and we're going to iterate through the result and display here the databases that exist on the server. Now, here we simply do some garbage collection by closing the connection and freeing result. So this is very simple PHP code that proves to us that we have indeed successfully connected to the database. So I shall save this and exit. Next, let me return to the parent directory by going cd dot dot. And in the parent directory, we shall create a file called docker file. And this is nothing but a text file that dictates the nature of the image that represents our web app. So again, I will go notepad 
and write till docker file and hit enter. This creates for me a docker file dot text file. Now I should exit again and rename this docker file dot text to simply docker file because this is the official name of this file. If I do a DIR, the only file I have is Docker file. So let me open this up in Notepad. The code for my Docker file will look like this. The first thing is we're going to pull from Docker Hub an image that contains PHP in the Apache web server. And this is an appropriate image for that. Then we want to activate these MySQL extensions. So we need to pull it and then activate these extensions. And this is the code for doing that. Then we'll copy the contents of the SRC folder that at the moment only contains one file and that is index.php. We will copy the contents of SRC folder into this directory inside of the container and we will expose ports 80 and 443. So that's all we need to do docker file. So let's exit and save this. Next we will create the docker compose.yml file. The docker compose.yml file is responsible for orchestrating a docker local area network with two containers and getting them to talk together. So to this end, we will create another file and we'll call it docker compose.yml. The code for docker compose.yml will look like this. First thing is the version of Docker Compose. And at the moment, the highest version happens to be 3.8. The next thing is the name of the volumes that we will have. So what is a volume? A volume is a repository for data on your host machine. There will be two containers represented by services. The first service is MySQL, which is the name of the service. And the second service is website, again, the name of the service. The MySQL container will be based on this image, which it will download from Docker Hub. And this service will have a container and we shall name this container MySQL 8. In this container, we need these environment variables. Remember, this container is a MySQL container. We need to set the root password for MySQL and we want the port number to be 3306. Now, this is optional because if you don't enter this specific port number, it will by default set the port number to be 3306. Next section is volumes. This directory inside of the container that contains data will be mapped to this volume on the host machine. Restart always essentially says that for whatever reason, if the container stops, it will automatically get restarted. So we're done with this service. Let's look at this service and this service represents our website. Again, the container, we will name it PHP 73. How is it going to be built? This container will be based on the Docker file that we looked at before. So the Docker file that we have in the current directory will be built and it will essentially create the image from which this service will be started. So here it says build from the current directory, a file called Docker file. To connect to the database, we would like to have these environment variables. Now, this environment variable represents the location of the database server. And the database server, its machine name will be MySQL. That's why here we specify dbhost as being MySQL. The port is 3306, which is the same port we started our MySQL with. The user will be root, and root happens to be the super user in MySQL. The password is secret, which was specified right up here, created, the MySQL server. Notice that that I have commented out the database name because in this particular example, I'm not interested in a database. I want to read all the databases that are running on the server. Finally, we're going to expose port 80 in this service to port 8080 on the host machine and port 443 used for SSL, that will be exposed on the host machine as port 8083. This last statement means that this service 
depends on the MySQL service. If the MySQL service is not running, then obviously our website will not work. So this represents the overall solution that we are orchestrating. Let's close this, save it. Let's test our application, see if it works in its containerized environment. That's very easy. To get it to run, you just type in docker pose, because this is a utility in docker, and up to get it started. So let's wait until it's done, and then we can prove to ourselves that it works by simply pointing our browser to localhost 8080. So here, this is all the instructions that we gave it. You just have to wait until this settles down. And when it settles down, it means it's ready for you to work with. At this point, it has settled down. So it's saying that MySQL is ready for connections. So let's find out if this is going to work. I'm going to bring over my browser and go localhost 8080, if that works. Sure enough, it works. This is telling me that these are the databases that exist on my MySQL server. That's encouraging. Now, if we want to clean up our environment, we can hit Control C to stop our Docker Compose. And then once it's stopped, you can go Docker Compose down as opposed to up. And this does some cleanup. What it does is it actually removes the containers. So if I do docker ps, my containers have been stopped and they have been removed. What about the actual image that was created for our web application? So we can go docker images and see if we have that image. And indeed, here it is. This is the image that was created on the docker file. If I want to remove this image, I can go docker rmi which stands for remove image and put in enough characters here going from the left that is sufficiently unique. So I can actually use simply 261. I don't need to enter the whole thing. Enter here 261 and it should remove for me the image. If you want to remove the volume, well, at first let us find out what are the volumes that we have. So I can say docker volume ls to list all the volumes. And this is the data files volume that I specified in my docker compose file. If I want to delete this, then I can go docker volume rm for remove and take this name and that will remove our volume. If I go back to docker volume ls and hit enter, I'll find that it's been cleared. So I showed you how you can clear all these artifacts that were created. I hope you found this video useful. If you found it useful, please give it thumbs up. Thanks. I'll see you soon.